we will start by creating a new project which will be a Windows desktop project and a console project. We will name this project XPO Tutorials and now we will set up the project to run on x86 instead of any CPU which will be the default. and we save the settings. Now we will install the new web package for XPO. We will accept the license and now we are ready to add our first persistent object which will be basically a simple .NET class. We will name this class customer. We will make this class public and change the base inheritance to DevExpress XPO XPO object. Now we will add the missing constructors. As you can see, each persistent object needs a three constructor. Now we will set up each of the constructors as public, because otherwise we won't be able to instantiate a new object. Now that that is done, we will simplify the XPO namespace and define our first persistent property, which will be basically a string. I will use the CodeRush shortcut XPS. And as you can see, this property contains a special type of setter. Now we are ready to go back to the program class. and we will define the data layer. But for that, first we need to import the namespaces DevExpress XPO and DevExpress XPO DB. Now we're ready to create the connection string. For that, we will use a special class from the namespace DevExpress XPO DB. In this case will be the access connection provider and this contains a static method with two overloads one that you only specify the database name and one that you have to specify database name username and password we will use the most simplest one and only specify the database name Now we're ready to set up the data layer. We will use the XPO default data layer property. This is a static property that contains a data layer for the whole application. And we will get a new data layer using the connection string and the auto create options, which tell XPO if it needs to create the database, the database and the schema, or basically do nothing when the schema and the database already exist. Now we're ready to create the first instance of our persistent object. For that, we will declare an instance and pass the session of XPO in the constructor. In this case, we will use the XPO default session which is attached to the XPO default data layer. Now we will set the persistent property name to my name, in this case, Jose Manuel Ojeda Melgar. And we will save our persistent object.
now we will run the application and check the values of our data layer and our persistent property. As you can see, our data layer contains a connection to my database.mdb, which is the access database that I set up on the connection string. And also the persistent property saves the value that I assign. Now we invoke the save method and we will go to the file system and check the database that XPO created. Now in here you will see a table that represents our persistent class with more properties than the one that we define. For example, OID is not defined, optimistic lock is not defined, and GC record. Those are infrastructure fields that XPO uses. And with this, I finish the first tutorial on how to use XPO. I will see you guys on the next tutorial. Take care, and thanks for watching.